What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and I've officially had the iPhone 11 for about a month now and there's a lot of good and some bad to talk about, so let's jump in. Now the first good thing we've got to talk about is the price. After using this thing for a month and seeing how it performs, it's crazy to me that it's $300 less than the base model iPhone 11 Pro, considering you get a lot of the same experience. And even crazier is the fact that this thing cost $50 less than the iPhone XR when that first came out. It's just not something you'd expect to see from Apple, where they actually drop the price on a phone that gives you a very similar experience to their flagship models. So the pricing is something that's surprising to me even today, but we gotta move on to the bad. With the iPhone 11, there might be some confusion with the whole naming scheme. Now the iPhone 11 is a direct upgrade from the iPhone XR and not the 10 X or 10S, which may be a bit confusing for some people who probably have a 10 or 10S thinking that the 11 is the natural progression, but it isn't. Now the reason why I think this confusion can be a bad thing is if you're coming from a 10 or a 10S and you go to the iPhone 11 thinking it's the next step, you might be disappointed because there are some drawbacks even from those older models. Even upgrading wouldn't be getting the same quality display, which we'll talk about in a bit. The body will also be different because you go from stainless steel to that aluminum, and you even miss out on 3D touch, but that one's less of a gripe because you kind of lose that with all of the new models. Apple got rid of 3D touch for haptic touch. It's not as good, but everyone has to deal with it who's upgraded, so that one's not so bad. So I feel like I just gotta put that out there. If you're upgrading from one of those devices and you get really used to it, you might notice some big changes with the 11. And the next good we have to talk about, guys, is the performance. As I mentioned before, you're getting almost the exact same experience as having the 11 Pros. They both have the A13 Bionic chip inside of it. So you're gonna have the same speeds, the same overall snappiness. It just feels like you're using a Pro model, but with a different body. I've been able to switch between the two and not worry about the Pro being able to do something that the 11 can't, besides the camera, but we'll, we'll talk about that. They've got the same amount of power and speed, so app performance, overall snappiness of the device is pretty much equal. And it's $300 cheaper, which is still crazy to me. And when I really stopped to think about that after using both, you can't help but see how much of an incredible value the 11 is when it can do so much that the 11 Pro does. Now what's bad here is while everything that's powering this guy is pretty much the same, the differences really come in on the outside. Instead of that nice premium stainless steel that you get with the Pro models, you got that aluminum finish. It's really not as nice, but it might not be a big deal for most people, especially if you're using a case. But I will say though, with the 11, you do get a few more color options than you do with the Pro models. So if you like to have a special fancy color, you got six to choose from with the 11. Personally, I think the green is the best color. It's like the closest thing to teal that we've got. So it's a no brainer, obviously. It's also got that LCD panel instead of the OLED. It's not the kind of thing that you notice just by using the phone. You only really notice it when you've got them side by side. Whenever I switch to the iPhone 11, the screen looks completely normal to me. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I know a lot of tech reviewers who are using the iPhone XR without a problem. That's saying a lot. Tech reviewers no screens. So it's not a big deal, but it's definitely not as good as its OLED counterparts. And I do wish that it had a higher resolution display. And the next good we've got to talk about guys is the camera. Apple decided to add another lens to this. So it's rocking a dual lens system. But what I like is that Apple didn't go with a telephoto lens alongside the wide angle. It went with the wide angle and the ultra wide. That to me is the best combo. I don't know about you guys, but I find using the ultra wide angle lens a lot more convenient than the telephoto lens. I found it way more useful for me to have that feature. And if I wanna zoom in, I could just do a digital zoom. You lose a little bit of quality there, but it's honestly not a big deal. Not to mention, now this phone can take portrait mode photos of things that aren't people's faces. So that is definitely a nice upgrade. If you wanna take pictures of pets or something, you'll be able to pull it off with even the 11. And you can even do like the wider portrait mode, which is nice. And when it comes to video, pfft, crazy stuff. The iPhone 11s have been amazing when it comes to videos and you still get all of those nice 4K settings. So if you wanna take great videos with your iPhone 11, you're gonna be able to do that. But what's really bad to me when it comes to this whole screen thing are the bezels. The bezels just look, they look kind of gross compared to the 11 Pros or even the 10S or 10S Max. If you're coming from one of those phones, you're gonna notice those bezels. Absolutely, I guarantee it. 
Obviously, if this is your only device, it's something you get used to, but having so much experience with the other models definitely makes it stand out to me. Now, another good that I have to mention is the size. This thing has a 6.1 inch screen, which comes right in the middle of the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. So it's kind of that sweet spot where you have a nice big display, but you also don't have the gigantic display like the Max. It's a lot more comfortable in the hand, putting it in the pocket is not a big deal. So I've definitely been enjoying the size of it. And honestly, it's like the perfect size iPhone. If they could just trim down those bezels, it would be so good. Now, something else that's great about the iPhone 11 is the fact that it has really good battery life. The 10R was known for the best battery life of any iPhone yet, and the 11 has improved by an hour, which is just awesome. It's not a crazy leap in battery life like the iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max, but it didn't need that crazy leap because it was just so good. So this thing is right up there with the Pro models now. They all have really, really solid battery life. But this leads me to my next bad. This thing doesn't come with a fast charger in the box. That's kind of mind blowing to me. The Pro models do come with the 18 watt charger inside. This one doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There are cheaper phones out there that have their fast chargers included. So it's really not a price thing. I get it that this phone is so much cheaper. And with Apple knocking $50 off, I'm sure you could go out and use that money to go buy a fast charger or something, but it would have been nice to see it included inside of the box make the whole line consistent. I feel like that would have been a good move, but it just sucks that there's a feature with the iPhone 11 that you can't take advantage of unless you buy something extra. Would have been nice to have it in the box. And I think the only other bad I can mention, and at this point I'm just nitpicking, is the water resistance. It's not a feature I ever take advantage of, but the iPhone 11 Pros can go four meters for 30 minutes underwater, while the 11 can just do two meters for 30 minutes. Still plenty to me, honestly, like I said, just nitpicking, uh, but this is a really good phone, guys. Honestly, it's an incredible value. You're getting that iPhone 11 experience without having to shell out the extra $300 for pretty much the telephoto lens, a better display, which is a big one, and of course the stainless steel body, but that one's not a big deal either. So I feel like this phone is probably the one that most people will pay attention to, and rightfully so. It is a solid buy and it definitely gets my recommendation. After using it for as long as I have been, it is clearly easy to see that this is a good, good phone. But if you guys own the 11, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it helped if you needed to make a purchasing decision and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then it's your average consumer. Peace.